for being with me today. I have with me Chief Art Bodenheimer from the Lake Alfred Police Department. We have some good news to share. First off, I want to tell you a little bit about Terry Yelvington, our victim. Terry was viciously murdered last year on August the 11th. And I'll give you the details in a minute, but you need to know the man. You need to know how he was loved, how he was appreciated in the community, how Tina, his wife, was loved and appreciated in the community. Terry Yelvington was a long-term employee of PCA. He'd been there over two decades. He was reliable. He was well-liked. He was the vice president of Miss Auburndale softball for 20 years. He volunteered and coached Miss Auburndale softball for 35 years. They call him Coach Terry. Tina also volunteered, his wife, for 20 years. Some said they don't have any children, and I dispute that. Terry and Tina had every child in the Auburndale, Lake Alfred area that ever played softball in the last 35 years as their children. They were loved and appreciated far more than you can ever imagine. There's not been a place that I've gone to in the northeast quadrant of this county since that fateful day when someone didn't look at me and said, Sheriff, when are y'all going to solve this murder? Sheriff, what are you in the Lake Alfred Police doing about this murder? I've assured people every day someplace in that area of the community that we were working on it. And I'm so very proud of our homicide detectives. So let's look at a history of what occurred. On August the 11th, the Lake Alfred Police Department received a frantic 911 call at 735 Todd Hunter Way in Lake Alfred. Officers arrived within just a short period of time and found Terry Yelvington deceased from a gunshot wound in the neck laying in the front yard next to his vehicle. Light LAPD requested our assistance and we sent our homicide team there. We met Tina that morning. We gave her our assurances that we would work around the clock, that we would never forget Terry and we would work until we solved and found out who murdered her wonderful husband and of the, one of the most well-respected men in our community. The neighbors reported that they saw a dark blue or black SUV, possibly a GMC Jimmy or a Chevy Blazer in the area. Detectives also located surveillance videos and one of our witnesses said that looks exactly like the vehicle that I saw earlier. Detectives learned that Terry worked at Packaging Corporation of America that he was the president of United Steelworkers Union. They developed a suspect after interviewing a lot of employees at PCA, and they said there was this one guy by the name of Alfred Jenkins. Jenkins, in fact, was the treasurer of the local chapter of the union, and Tina says, I don't have any idea how he could have been the treasurer of the union and you'll agree with us in a few minutes when we give you the detail. Jenkins was fired from PCA in 2009. The next treasurer, after going through the books, learned that Jenkins had stole funds from the union and brought this to Terry's attention. Terry notified the appropriate sources, appropriate investigators, and subsequent to the investigation, Alfred Jenkins was criminally charged. By this time, he had gone to work for Coca-Cola in Auburndale, and they fired him upon his arrest. Alfred Jenkins was a vile man. He was a dangerous man when we look at his criminal history. Detectives followed up and developed significant information 
which allowed them to serve a search warrant at his current residence at the time, which was 2216 Avenue B Southwest in Winter Haven. And he was arrested for three counts of petty theft and possession of cannabis. We not yet had enough information for a homicide arrest. Records were discovered during that search warrant where Jenkins actually wrote that there was bad blood between him and Yelvington. As detectives were solidifying their murder case against Alfred Jenkins, and we had a lot of evidence and a lot of circumstantial evidence that we put together, detectives learned on the 14th of January of a confidential source who asked to speak with our homicide team and related information that only either the murderer or someone who talked to the murderer would know. The confidential source said, yeah, Alfred Jenkins told me. He says, they've got pictures of my car in the area. He said to the source that he had three guns to include a 380 caliber handgun which he had clean. He said, you know, there was a struggle in the garage over money. I went there to collect some money. And during the struggle, I blacked out. And he said, I had my phone with me. Do you reckon that's a problem? All the information and much more that we're not revealing today corroborated exactly the circumstances and the evidence our homicide team had put together. Detectives obtained an arrest warrant for Alfred Jenkins. We went to his new residence where he was staying with a girlfriend at 895 13th Court Northeast in Winter Haven, and we arrested him. We read him his rights, and he was not quite as forthcoming with us as he had been apparently with some people in the community. We executed a search warrant at another residence and we found 380 ammunition, the same brand, the same exact type that was used to murder Terry. So he's been charged with first degree murder, robbery, possession of a firearm by a convicted felony, felon, and tampering with evidence. But for just a moment, let's look at our suspect. Let's look at who he is. Let's understand that there are those in the community, I would say not many, but those in the community that are getting some voices about, oh, we're just too hard on criminals. They can change their ways. Well, I can tell you Alfred Jenkins started with possession of heroin and possession of marijuana. You know that minor drug? possession of stolen property, burglary and larceny, possession of marijuana and resisting between 81 and 83 in New Jersey. Then he went out to California. Hey, he's going to turn over a new leaf. Not. 1986, four counts of burglary. 1986, robbery. 1989, grand theft. Hey, he's going to leave California. Maybe things are hot. He goes to Georgia, 1992, armed robbery, burglary, and theft. 1992, felony theft. 1993, violation of probation. 1993, flight to escape. Well, it's a little hot in Georgia, so he comes to Florida. 1991 in St. Pete, armed robbery. In 1993, he was sentenced to 20 years in state prison. But this was before the minimum of 85% of your sentence. So he was let out for good conduct in only 12 years. After that lengthy record, he was let out on an armed robbery charge after serving just barely just over 50% of his sentence. There you go, folks. If you need an example for the Florida legislature of why we don't need to let people out early, well, gosh, that's just not enough for him. 
Then he comes to Polk County, and that's when he was ultimately charged with the grand theft related to stealing the union funds and possession of marijuana and three felony petty theft counts during his investigation here. His crime spree never changed. He seethed for five years before killing Terry Yelvington, but that's exactly what he did. So if you want to see evil in the flesh, there he is. This is a man who seethes for five years, who is going to get even with that Terry Yelvington, who was only doing the right thing, looking out for the union's money, and bringing a criminal to justice. Ladies and gentlemen, anybody that will rob you, anybody that will steal from you, anybody will have this kind of violent past can be capable of murder, even though the do-girders don't think so. We're not finished. I'm just taking a breath. Well, that was it. Well, at this point, I want to introduce to you the chief of police in Lake Alfred. If you don't know Chief Bodenheimer, he and I have been dear friends forever. We've known each other since we were kids. No one's more active in the community, more in touch with the community, and knew Terry and Tina, and his agency began the investigation. So I'd like to turn it over to the chief to talk to you about the investigation now. Chief. Thank you, Sheriff. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. This uh, notification of this arrest brings uh, hopefully great relief to uh, the city of Lake Alfred and our residents. Um, for many, many months now, uh, I still get asked on the street, you know, is anything being done? And I try to reassure our residents that yes, every single day that there's things being done. And as this investigation went, we talked many, many times about those things. So hopefully this brings relief that this was not a random act. This was a targeted act. Uh, I believe, and I believe the sheriff uh, certainly believes that this subject uh, was targeted. He's evil and uh, a heinous crime that uh, hopefully will never happen again uh, to anybody through this, uh, this subject. Um, the other thing I can tell you is <clears throat> not only, <clears throat> excuse me, not only was Terry a resident, a friend, but he coached with me. Um, and it's a happy day, but it's a sad day. I just think the cooperation <clears throat> of the Sheriff's Office, Lake Alfred Police Department, that we could bring the subject to justice. Thank you. Tina said that he, she would like to speak with you all as well. Tina, can you come up and join us for a minute? I want to extend my thanks to Polk County Sheriff's Office and the de detectives who spent countless hours seeking justice for my husband, his family, and me. I lost my best friend that day and my life will never be the same. <laughs> Terry was a great man. He mentored many young ladies for over 30 years as he coached, guided, and loved each one. The sport we have received from everyone in Polk County has been amazing and has kept me strong. Thank you to my employer, Public Supermarkets, and those in the softball community who have kept Terry's memory alive. I am eternally grateful. Hmm? No. Any questions? I have a question for you, Commander. And I know you're not the union, but if I had two cents for my name, I would not give it to this guy, an ex-felon, the manager. Any idea of how, why he ended up at that position in the first place? You know, you'll have to ask the either PCA or the union officials. Tina and I were talking about that before this meeting this morning. We said, Tina, do you have any idea she said, absolutely no idea how he would have ever gotten in a possession to of handle money for a union. Can you help um, connect the dots as far as the, the motive or moral um, part of the executive, why 
Well, it's abundantly clear. He, he was employed by PCA. He was a treasurer, and he was stealing money. Mr. Yelvington was the president of the union for PCA, and upon the termination of Alfred Jenkins for failure to, to report to work or other disciplinary issues, there was another treasurer appointed. That treasurer went to Terry, who's the president of the union, and said, hey, Alfred's stealing money. The books are not right here. There was an investigation done, and Terry was the one that, that initiated with law enforcement the investigation, personally went to the state attorney's office and said, we're the victim of a theft. The union is. And Terry was doing what was right. Well, subsequent to the criminal investigation, which was created as a result of the complaint filed by Terry because he was the president of the union, that's what caused not only the criminal charges against Alfred, but his termination from Coca-Cola. And he has seethed about that, obviously, ever since. Nothing that I know of. It just came out of the blue. Mm -hmm. No information at all. None. But he had an exact routine because he was due at work at a specific time. Tina left for work earlier. She worked for Publix in Lakeland, so she, she left the house before Terry did. So he was there by himself. So some surveillance of the residents would have clearly shown a normal workday pattern. This man knew Terry, worked with him, and he was evil, and he was mad, and he was angry, and he, he was used to in life doing whatever he wanted, whether it comported with the law or not. And he saw Terry as messing his deal up. Yes, he was. He was put in jail. I don't know whether or not he served prison time or not. He was arrested for that on December 19th, 2011. It gives me some relief knowing that somebody is in jail for this. It, I mean, it doesn't give me the answers I want, the why, and all that, but it does help me knowing that somebody is now in jail for what they, what they did to my husband. Yes. I just pushed forward as my husband would expect me to. I want him in jail for life. For life, not death? <laughs> That's a little hard because my faith that, you know, I, this is the second time my family's been through this. Me personally, I would like the same thing done to him that he did to my husband. But I want, I don't want him back out. I don't want him to do this to anybody else. Who, who knows who else he has, you know, is upset about. But you take one of the best men in Polk County, one of the most well-supported, never met a stranger guy, and you do this to him, you need something done to you. What do you mean by this is the second time this has happened to you? In my family, we've also had the preacher and his wife in, in North Florida that were murdered. That was also in my family. It's my sister-in-law's husband's. <coughs> parents. So this is the second murder in our family. Do you wear that, that pin a lot? I have one at my desk at work. I have um, whenever it's something for him, I always either that have that or we 
Winter Haven sponsored a, had a team dedicated to him. We will have a team dedicated to him in Auburndale, actually out here too this year. Um, and we will have a team in his memory every year from here on out. I would want him to answer the question why and give me a true reason why he did this. Because you did something wrong and you're going to take it out on a, a good person and you got caught. Any other questions? Although there's some hesitancy on her part to say that, he needs the death penalty. He needs to serve the ultimate penalty. He needs to die for killing Terry Yelvinton, who was a stellar member of this community. If the rest of this community, this state, and this nation would do and give back to the community like Terry and Tina Yelvington, this community, as good as it is, as great as this community is, as good as this country is, would be so much better. These are wonderful people just doing exactly what it is we like to see from the community. I mean, there is no quadrant that, that these folks weren't absolutely loved. And they were viciously murdered because this evil in the flesh was mad because he was brought to justice for stealing. And Terry had the intestinal fortitude to do what was right. Well, that was not unusual. Terry did what was right his entire life. And he was such a positive influence and leader in thousands and thousands of children in this community. It just makes us all angry. He did not. He gave us information that he well will regret later. Thank you all very much. Have a good weekend.